I'm Alex Rondonen, and welcome to If History Is Any Guide, the political and current affairs program on Biz 99.9 FM Substitute Radio. If we take even the most simplistic of glances at world history, we can see plenty of examples when the rich, when their property, money and privileges are being threatened, are willing to conduct the most grotesque and reactionary political acts, namely that of supporting, funding and assisting in the agencies of the ultra-right. Under normal times, when profits are steady and class struggle is low, these rich elites can present themselves as being civilised, humble and mature human beings, always capable of reason, logic and highly sophisticated intellectual thought. However, when push comes to shove, when revolutionary class struggle comes onto the cards, and when the masses of the working class begin to grasp of the wheels of power in society, then these same people will reveal to the world their true personalities, morals and principles. Abandoning logic, reason and civility, these rich elites will happily get into bed with the most hideous and reactionary of political forces. Russia in mid-1917, following the downfall of the Tsar months earlier, was in an intense mood of revolutionary fervour and potential. At such a time, the possibility of radical left Bolshevism coming to power was becoming more and more likely, which would involve the legalised elimination of private property and inheritance, as per Marx and Engels' words. To put simply, the working class of the country was beginning to awaken as the political force capable of transforming society. And if indeed Bolshevism was to come to power, then it would be almost definite that private property would soon become outlawed as part of Soviet Bolshevik rule. The Russian rich and elite, in a desperate bid to prevent this Soviet workers' revolution from taking place, thereby keeping hold of their riches, property and privileges, conspired to have a military coup take place. A friend of the Russian rich, the arch-reactionary General Kornilov, according to the plot, was to march into Petrograd, destroy the parliament, slaughter every last Bolshevik and Menshevik that could be found in the city, and to have Lenin's corpse paraded across the country. To put simply, the military was to invade the city, drown the revolution in blood, and murder every single member of the social democratic parties. Clearly from this Russian example, when push came to shove and their property was on the line, the rich were willing to support a savage and murderous military coup if that meant they could hold on to their monies. In Russia's example, the Kornilov coup didn't happen, and so the bloody violence never actually took place, thanks to the Bolsheviks heading it off, including shutting off the railway network, thus preventing the reactionary military forces from reaching Petrograd, leaving Kornilov defeated. The Bolsheviks did indeed take power in Russia a few months later, in world history's first and currently only example of a workers' government taking power of an entire country. However, Russia is the exception to the rule. History is full of other examples of the rich conducting direct, reactionary political activities to prevent left-wing radicalism from taking power, reactionary activities of which were completely successful. In Chile in 1973, during a similarly intense mood of revolutionary potential there, the military general Augusto Pinochet took power via military coup. The horrors that followed, all of which were cheerled by Chile's rich and powerful, are as follows. Quote, the coup was conducted with an extraordinary savagery. Thousands were raped, subjected to inhuman torture, starved, abused, murdered. In the following 12 months, 30,000 people were killed. End quote. And finally, we mustn't forget about Nazism. After the successful Russian Revolution, the spirit of Bolshevism had spread all across the continent, with millions of people rising up in revolt against their local rulers and the world war and their miserable financial circumstances of their lives. 
In 1918, the German monarchy had fallen, and the same revolutionary fervour that was in Russia was now there too, with Bolshevik-esque parties becoming larger and more formidable by the day, with the potential of them too taking power soon on the cards. The German Communist Party, though small, had very capable leaders, had the money and organisation necessary, and thus had the potential of taking power if the conditions were right for it. In order to prevent this from happening, the German elites helped to fund a collection of ultra-right-wing military political organisations, of which was the embryonic form of Hitler's eventual National Socialist Party. These ultra-right military groups went around the country and destroyed the revolution by committing a whole series of violent atrocities, including mass violence, terrorism, burning down buildings and assassinations. The person who could have been Germany's Lenin, Rosa Luxemburg, was murdered by these forces, being briefly tortured before then being shot and dumped into the local canal. Germany's rich elites, the haves, those people from the middle and upper classes, who stood to lose all their wealth, property and privileges if German Bolshevism had successfully come to power, were celebrating the news of Luxembourg's death, understandably, quote, screaming and jumping for joy. And that's all the time we have for today. You've been listening to If History Is Any Guide, the political and current affairs program on Biz 99.9 FM Substitute Radio. I'm Alex Rondonen. Until next time, goodbye. <laughs>